I'm just getting ready to head to bed. So we'll run out there and scare the milk off one more time. Let's get him, I see him. this but every night it's gotten pretty old so the Idaho game fish came by yesterday and dropped off these panels for us so they're out of eight foot tall ones so they just gave us a bunch of these four foot ones so I'm gonna have to double stack them I think they said they're about 16 feet long so I'm gonna go over there and try to put them up on that hay shed and figure out how we're gonna do that so I'm gonna come in here with that back and see if I can't spear this bunch here and I've got to grab my fencing staples buried inside this shed here all of this snow right in front of the shed is just from sliding off the roof. That's the amount of snow that we've gotten so far this year. Still not exactly sure how I want to do this. So since these are only four foot panels, I'm going to have to do too high with them to get my eight feet. And we've got so much snow that slid off the roof here. This pile of snow is probably four feet high. One of these days we're going to warm up and it's going to start melting the snow. So this pile of snow is going to start melting and settling down. So I don't, I just don't know how high to put the panels on the posts here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set them down into the snow as far as I can because this is I all this is pretty much all ice through here from the you know the water dripping off the roof so I'll set them down in the snow as far as I can and I'll just lay that second row on top staple it right to the post I might have to come back later in the spring and just shift everything down once the snow starts to melt and then the same thing with my entrances you know on this side and that uh north side I don't have any posts here what I thought about doing is taking two four by four straw bales and stacking them right here in the middle maybe outside here a little bit and do almost almost like a half a octagon shape here and just staple the one ends into that post and uh, that end into that post and then tie everything together against these bales up here in the front so i just don't know for sure how to do this we'll just start picking away at it and we'll see what we end up with so crawling up here onto my blind i'll show you how close we're getting with these outside bales so if you look, we're just right here. That's where the ends of my rows are. It's just maybe 50 yards away from the north side of this hay shed. So once all this outside hay is gone, this is where they're coming to next is all these bales in here. And we've been really lucky that they've been staying out here and just eating on this outside hay. So when they come in, they're just eating on these the ends of these rows here. And they haven't ventured further this way into this hay shed. When I go out to feed later this afternoon, I'll, I'll show you what they do about every night to the end of these bales. So it's the first part of March right now, and I'm hoping this remaining outside hay will get me to the first part of April. And I'm hoping what's in this hay shed right now will get us into May, hopefully the first week or two of May. And I'm hoping by then that the grass is gonna start coming up and you know these cows can start grazing a little bit and we don't have to keep feeding them so much. But the way this winter's gone, the amount of snow we have, I just don't know what to plan for. It might be, you know, June before we even get a decent amount of grass around here. What a miserable job, trudging through all this deep snow. 
that roof's dripping. It's dripping right on me where I'm trying to pound staples into these panels. What a pain. Putting up that top row was a pain in the butt. Putting those panels up was like fighting a wet noodle. So I got these east side panels put up. I'm gonna have to come back through eventually and get some wire and wire up all these seams just so they're not flopping around. And I tried to offset my seams on this bottom and top runs like you would on a roof so my seams aren't stacked on top of each other. So here's a seam here and here's a seam over there for that one. Oh, that was a lot of work. That's only one side. I still got the the west side to do in the ends. I think the ends will be the easiest because I won't be you know, digging through all this snow. So we'll just keep plugging along and see how far we get. I'm gonna have to quit here in a few hours and go feed cows and, and go get Ellis from daycare. So I got this east side done. Same thing, I'm gonna have to come back and use wire to I get all my splices and in a couple spots the these panels are sitting right against these bales so i think i'll come back when i'm doing that and i've got I think, a couple extra rolls of chicken wire and i'll just put some chicken wire over this so the milk can't get their noses inside the these openings and eat on that hay i wish i would have started this first thing this morning when everything's still frozen because i'm soaking wet being right under these eaves here getting dripped on the whole time but i'm running out of time and I need to go get the cows fed. So I think the last thing I'm gonna do is just work on this north side and just do the bottom row of panels to see what it looks like and see if we need to change anything. So I thought I liked doing it this way more than I do. There's just too much unsupported panel here in the middle on this one. So I'm actually, when I come back out here, maybe a couple days, I'm just gonna push these bells back inside a bit more. I'm just gonna make this square. So we'll just go from that post straight across to the other post. We won't do half the octagon shape. So this is what these elk are still doing. They're coming in here to the end of these rows of round bales and eating these centers out. Here, here. They haven't gotten to that one yet, but they got into this one here. So like I've been saying, I'm just trying to feed these up as fast as I can. So once they start eating on them, I try to feed them. They don't tear apart the whole bale bad enough that I can't pick it up and move it. So this row of silage that we sacrificed to the elk, it's pretty much gone now. Just little pieces here and there. This is all that's left of it. These couple of bales here. And they've been exposed so long, they're pretty moldy and rotten. So I don't know that the elk have much desire to eat that right now. So real quick, I just want to show you guys how much of this bale these elk are eating. So here's the edge here, right here. Get my whole length of my arm in there. That's probably a good foot and a half, two feet out of the center of this bale. You know, it comes up about my shoulder. Like I said, every night they're coming in here and eating that. Doesn't matter if I come out here and scare them off or even if I shoot one, they come back and still eat that much hay. So we're just gonna do our nightly routine again. I'm bringing a rifle with me this time and see if we can't thin out the herd a little bit. I got some more deprivation tags for March and see if we can't use some of those up. If we shoot another elk tonight, that'll be I think number 10 or 11 that we've shot. And I'm just tired of shooting elk and gutting them out. I can see them right over that snowbank. Probably can't see them very well with this camera, but there's a there's a group of them right over that snowbank. She went down. 
I know the camera doesn't pick it up very good, but it's just right over in that area there. Let's go have a look. There she is. So now the actual work begins. Now we get to get her out. So I got my cousin to come out here and help me get her. Probably won't show you guys that because there's no real need, but we'll get her gutted out. And I've just been giving them out to friends and family that need meat, so she's not going to waste. So you don't need to worry about that. Well, that one's done. We'll do the same thing tomorrow. Either go out there and scare them or, or shoot them. It's a never ending battle. I don't know where everybody's watching from, but you guys can always start praying and asking for some of this snow and moisture. So we've got enough. We don't need any more. So I just figured I'd come out here real fast and move these bales while I was feeding. And then I don't have to worry about starting up a piece of equipment tomorrow morning to move them. So I got this one moved and I'll just move that one on the north side. We go straight across this opening with these panels like I was talking. So we'll see how that looks tomorrow. Almost the middle of March and it's 10 below this morning. Boo. So we got some of this old hay here that my brother-in-law gave us. He said his horses didn't want to eat it and so he just wanted to get rid of it and he piled it up there for us. And I'm going to take it out there to where the elk are coming in and just spread it out and see if maybe they'll stop there and eat that first and try to keep them out of our round bales and that silage, at least for a little bit. So I spread six of them out and I just dumped the remaining four up there. So we'll just come back tomorrow and see what they look like and see if they stopped and ate these or if they went on to that nicer hay. Yeah, that's the reason my brother-in-law got rid of this hay because he said his horses wouldn't eat it and they'd been eating on our, you know, our premium horse hay that they get from us. And so these elk might be the same way. They might not want to eat this stuff. So Lindsay and I came out here the other night and finished tying all this hay shed up, all the panels up here. So these panels tied up and these wire to tie them together on these splices. They've got you know, staples in them on the posts. And down here on this end, I had to use a bale to lean these panels against. So like I said, I just brought the bales back in a bit so they weren't sticking out so far. I think it made it a little bit more sturdy. I just had to wire the two panels together up and down. Then we use baling twine to attach them to the bales so they won't fall forward. Oh, it's still pretty flimsy, but I don't know. I just don't know how hard elk will push. I don't know if they'll push on it real hard or, or if they'll see the panels there and just give up and kind of circle around looking for an opening. So one of the last things I need to do, I need to find some chicken wire or something to put on the front of these bales because these openings are fairly big and I think the elk could fit its nose through there and eat on these bales. Even though there's straw, I think they still eat them. This bottom bale is actually um, an alfalfa grass mix, but this one here and and then two over there are straw. So I need to find some chicken wire or some plywood or some something, you know, something to stick on the front of these. So for those of you that are new to the channel or hadn't watched my previous video about the elk and haven't heard me talk about how these deprivation tags work, so the game official issued me X amount of tags every month that allows me to go out here and shoot these elk. I can shoot them any time of day. I can use spotlights, however I want to do it. Then the elk that I shoot, I can give them away to people in need, I can give them to the food bank, I can give them to whoever might need them. And if I don't want to deal with them, I just need to contact the game and fish and tell them that, hey, I don't want to deal with these elk and they'll come over and grab them and they'll take them to a family in need or whoever they have lined up to take them. So I just wanted to give that quick explanation so I don't get chewed out or have people calling me in for shooting elk at night. So the last thing I'm gonna do 
I need to put up this end down here. And I've held off on this end because this is the side that we're gonna be coming in to grab our hay when we start feeding out of this hay shed. And I can't tie it up like I did that one because that'd just be a nightmare to have to undo that every day to come in here and get bales. So I was waiting to figure out how I wanted to do this end. And luckily we've got a neighbor just up the road from us that has uh, some of these eight foot tall panels that I'm gonna go borrow from him. And so we'll just put up three panels across here and I'll probably use uh, like a carabiner or something to tie these panels together. And with those tall panels and using them carabiners, it'll be easy enough to open them up and get in there and get our hay for the day. Probably be similar to open up a wire gate or something like that. So I'm running up there tonight to grab them panels and then hopefully we can tie this up in the next couple days. So I got the panels. Like I was saying, these are the same length. They're 16 feet long, but they're seven or eight feet. They almost look more seven feet than eight feet tall. So I just stuck this two by six on my bed to try to keep this end here from dragging on the ground all the way back from my neighbor's house. So I'm just gonna unstrap these and drag them over to the hay shed and call it a night. I'll try to get them put up tomorrow. So I just stood them up real quick. That's what they look like. I think they are seven foot panels, not quite eight feet. So hopefully tomorrow I'll come back and I'll staple this end to that pole. I'll staple that end to that pole. Like I said, I'll use carabiners or something here in the middle to tie these three together. And hopefully that'll be easy enough for me to come in here and just undo it and open it up when I need to get hay. So I guess it'll work until it doesn't. We'll give it a try. I can't tell for sure because I don't have any binoculars on me. It looks like there might be a line of elk working their way across that open area right there. Because that's where they come down at. They come down right off this ridge right here and come down through there, work their way through a couple fields and right into our place. So I might have to come back out here tonight and maybe try to shoot another one of them. And there's a watering hole that's still open over here. I think that's where they're going with this trail because they go over there and drink. The window's pretty frosty. We'll step outside. Okay, she's down. We'll run out there and see what we got. So from what I could see, most of the herd was sitting out here eating on these bales I just threw out. These bales here. When I shot, a couple of them ran out from behind them round bales from eating on those. For the most part, it looks like most of them were eating on these little bales that I threw out. So like I said, she's right here. And the bales we set out are just right along here. I don't know how you can see, but they were nibbling on this. Nibbling on that one quite a bit. So it'll be interesting to see when I come back out here tomorrow how much this hay's been eaten, because I'm sure these elk will be back within a couple hours eating more hay. So I can still see them. They're all the way. You can't really see it on the camera, but there's a fence over that way maybe 300 yards and I heard him jump up and over that and I can kind of see the line of them over there so we'll get to work on this one again so I'm bringing out some more of this bad hay to set out here for these elk just wanted to show you guys what they did last night they tore these bales apart picking on that one picking on this one a bit they got into those ones over there pretty good and that pile I got going there they got those eating on and it seemed like it did help so it looks like they still came in here and I've been eating on the fronts of these bales, but not near as bad as what it has been. The bale I picked up yesterday, I about, about lost it, about fell apart on me. And so I'm hoping that this will keep them from coming in here and eating on these so much. And hopefully they'll eat on that bad hay. So I'm gonna grab this one today and grab a silage bale. So I'm sure some of you are wondering why I don't just move all this hay into the hay shed now that I got them panels up. And the reason is I've still got probably 30 30, 40 silage bales left out here. I can't really move them silage bales because I can't pull them out of the bags because then it exposes them to air, then they just rot on you. So I need to keep them in the bags. And I don't want to move all this dry hay because then that, then that gives the elk nothing else to eat out here besides them silage bales. And 
if they don't have anything else to eat besides those silage bales they'll just tear open those bags and then i've got a whole bunch of rotten silage so i'm just gonna keep doing what i'm doing just kind of working my way back with these this dry hay and i've got it timed about right that i'll run out of this dry hay about the same day as i run out of silage and then we can drop back into our hay shed and hopefully these panels will keep them out of there i'll try to keep you guys a little bit more posted on what's happening with these elk because i sure get a lot of questions about them so i figured this would be a good video to get you guys up to date and i'll try to do a better job on doing that keeping you filled in so thanks for watching everybody and have a good day